channel for this new video since months first of all i want to thank you all for your patience the last few months were just so unbelievably crazy for me but yeah i hope you enjoyed this new video even more and get a glimpse of how a trip to hokkaido could be have fun our journey began in Oarai, Tokyo, where we took the evening ferry to Tomakomai, Hokkaido. At the check-in, we found out that you'll need to specially check in bigger objects like snowboards, which not really made sense to us, as other people were taking along with them bigger suitcases. Anyway, we were able, after a long discussion with the crew, to find a solution. So, my recommendation is to send your luggage if it's a bit bigger and not to take it onto the ferry. A great way to send your luggage is Yamato Transport. As usual, you'll find all important links down below. As you need to be early at the check-in, we had some spare time, which we used to check out ORI. On the rocked coastline facing the Pacific Ocean, we spotted one of the Tori gates of ORI, Isosaki Jinja. The name of this gate is Kamiso no Tori and represents the place where the gods landed. The shrine itself is rumored to have been built in 856 AD. The main building was destroyed during fighting in the 16th century, but rebuilt in the next century. The shrine has three Tori gates. Each gate presents a different view and environment. Then it already was time to board the ship, which was very exciting. The Sunflower Evening Ferry was launched in 2017 and seemed quite luxurious and spacious. With many different possibilities of accommodations, ways to relax in different lounges or the restaurant, which provided a great amount of delicious food. We decided on the cheaper option and took the Comfort Capsule Cabin. For one night it was absolutely enough, spacious, clean and quiet. But most important, it was warm enough for a comfortable sleep. As you might already know, Japanese have vending machines for everything. But this milk vending machine was the first I ever saw. On our 18 hours trip, we often went out to enjoy the sea and the starry night sky. Another thing which I thought was really cool was the outside play space for dogs. So yes, you would even be allowed to take your pets with you. Moreover, there was a little shop and even two onsen with big windows for sea view. The trip was beautifully relaxing. After we arrived, we needed to take the bus to Sapporo, which took some time. In every spare minute, my companions decided to play chess. And as no trip is good when you're hungry, we also had many funny typical Japanese snacks. Sapporo greeted musically. The trip from Tomakomai took some time and as we arrived it was dark already. And where it started with a bit of snow in Sapporo, in Furano was loads of it. We decided to buy some cup ramen for dinner and wandered through the snow to find a taxi. We booked our accommodation in Furano via Airbnb and we didn't know what we expected, but we were stunned. Greeted by our lovely hosts, which heated our apartment for a warm and comfortable arriving. Yukari Cabins is a collection of three self-catered cabins located in a forest, just a few minutes drive to either the Kita Nomine Resort Base, New Furano Prince Hotel or Furano City. These unique log cabins were built by hand in the 1990s and restored to modern specifications just last year. 
What was amusing was the friendly baker next door who seemed to run his shop in his garage. Anyhow, the bread was delicious. As the distance to the roadway was quite long, our host kindly drove us as we hadn't had a car, which I can highly recommend if you're used to driving on slippery roads. The next few days we spent snowboarding, which was loads of fun. Hokkaido provided to have the most beautiful powder snow I've ever saw and you know, I'm from Switzerland. The ski resort consists of two zones, Furano and Kitanomine, which have 28 trails in total. You can reach the summit directly by a passenger Furano ropeway and see a great view of the Daisetsu mountain range. There are two Prince hotels at the bottom of each area. Furthermore, there is a possibility for night skiing. For this trip, I rented my complete gear at Rim Furano. It was quite pricey, but the gear was of great quality and you could choose of many types of ski or snowboards. Furthermore, as the borders are still closed, there were few people on the mountain. To be honest, I haven't snowboarded in a long time since a horrible accident. And at first I was unbelievably nervous, but with the motivation of my great friends, it quickly became great fun once more. On our last day, we spent the afternoon at the lovely onsen in the Shin Furano Prince Hotel. I admired the outside area the most, where you could relax in the hot water and watch snowflakes fall in. There was also a nice little shopping village with tiny houses where you could buy self-made stuff, also from the native Ainu people. And to be honest, I fell in love with the Hokkaido bird. It's one of the cutest animals I've ever seen. I'm wondering why there are so many cute animals in Japan anyway. Afterwards, we spent time in Sapporo, one of my favorite cities in Hokkaido. Sapporo means important river flowing through a plain, in Ainu language. It is capital of Hokkaido and Japan's fifth largest city. Sapporo became world famous in 1972 when the Olympic Winter Games were held there. Today, the city is well known for its ramen, beer and the annual snow festival held in February. Unfortunately, due to Corona, the snow festival wasn't held the last two years. Otherwise, I can highly recommend it. The statues out of snow are marvelous. And moreover, there is a snowball fight tournament where everyone can participate from a group of six. Another thing which I find fascinating about Sapporo is the underground city built below the actual city. Aurora Town is 312 meters in length and includes the event space Aurora Plaza and an open space called Aurora Square. Aurora Town is a spacious area that puts visitors at ease, they say. At the Odori Small Bird Plaza, you can see the adorable shell grass parakeets, even though I find it quite unfriendly putting birds in an underground cage. As I mentioned before, Sapporo is known for its delicious ramen. The ramen alley began way back in 1948 with the opening of eight ramen houses. There are now currently 17 different ramen restaurants that line the alley, called Shirakawa Sanshu. From Sapporo, I continued my trip on my own, which took me to Hakodate. The train ride along the coastline was stunning. I stayed at the Cher Hotel Hakoba Hakodate, a very comfortable hostel with a bay view and just around the corner of the famous red brick shopping mall. The room was modern, clean and quiet, even though it was just next to Main Street. Hakodate has many cultural sites, which are even more interesting when you know a bit about its history. The Waijin people, dominant ethnic group of Honshu, who had migrated to Hokkaido, started to live at the foot of Mount Hakodate and other areas around the 14th century. 
In those days, the Aino people, indigenous to Hokkaido, who were called Anzo, were superior. Many conflicts occurred between the Aino and the migrants from Honshu. In the 17th century, Russia advanced south, increasing its power in Shakhalin and the Kuril Islands. In 1854, the shogun concluded a treaty with the U.S. Commodore Perry to open the country. As a result, Hakodate and Shimoda were chosen as designated treaty ports. Perry, leading his squadron, visited Hakodate as well. He highly praised the port, calling it the best port in the world. Since the end of the war, Hakodate has been developing as a tourist city. In 1958, Mount Hakodate Ropeway was opened. Numerous of tourists have enjoyed the night view of the city as one of the world's three best night views along with Nepal and Hong Kong. In 1964, Goryeo Kaku Tower was completed. It offered a sweeping view of Goryeo Gaku's star-shaped moat. A thing which kind of freaked me out was this burger chain, Lucky Parrot, as it's quite crazy and to be honest, I just don't like clowns. Lucky Parrot is best known for its juicy burgers. My night stroll along Hakodate Mejikan reminded me of holidays in Norway. This red brick building was built as Hakodate Post Office in 1911. Nowadays, there are many shops inside and a few possibilities for eating and drinking, like the German beer hall. All in all, Hakodate reminded me of a strange mixture between Switzerland, Norway and Japan. On my way home to Yokohama, I took the Hokkaido Shinkansen that goes through the Seikan undersea tunnel, which has realized a travel overland from Tokyo in a four hour range. If you stay till the end, congratulations. I hope you like this new video of mine. So yeah, and don't forget to visit me in Japan or subscribe. Till next time, bye-bye.